Uh, joining us now is a woman who is no stranger to success at all. She won the WSL with Liverpool. She won Serie A with Juventus, the Arnold Clark Cup, which was only, what, in February with England. Uh, good morning and very, very warm welcome as well to Katie Zellum. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, lovely to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, tell us how you're feeling at the moment because this is obviously a, a Euros on home soil. The Lionesses have a very good chance of, of winning. You know that team so well. You know their manager as well. What's the, what's the general feeling? Have you spoken to any of the players? What's going on? Yeah, I think they're all really excited. It feels like it's been a long time coming, to be honest. Obviously, I was involved in quite a lot of the training camps. So building up to this moment has been like five, six weeks now, I think. We've played a lot of um, friendlies and had a lot of in-house games, so this feels like they're really ready for the moment. Yeah, and Katie, obviously, you must just be gutted because you, you're so close and you, and you didn't make the squad. How is it? How, how was that feeling? I know it's probably hard for you to talk about, but are you all right? Yeah, it was quite hard to take at the time, obviously, being in and around the squad and so close to the girls and feels like just at the very last hurdle, I didn't quite make it into the squad, but I'm really excited for the girls and I've seen the group and the management they've got in place, so good luck to them tonight. Well, you can give us a really good insight because, like you say, you know Serena and you know that the change and what she's had since she's come in. What are those little things that you think she has, has been brought in to adapt and, and why do you think they're working? Well, most importantly, she's won the Euros before. I think yeah. you can't ever argue with a manager that's already won the tournament you're trying to win. I think when you're listening to someone that's been there and done it, it almost means that little bit more. And I think the girls know that Serena's got proven success and she's come in and implemented her own styles on the team. And the 14 games unbeaten coming into a home Euros, what more can you as for did you find when she came in was there that immediate respect for her because yeah, of what she'd done definitely i think she she was a previous player she had a great record as a player and then obviously come to england off a winning a euros in a second place at a world cup so it was almost like wow like you were taken back of it when she came in I wanted to ask you, who are the players to look out for in the england um, squad and how far can they go do you really think they can win it um, I think for me, Kira Walsh is an unsung hero. She plays in the six. She's always dictating the games, and yep. she often don't get the credit she deserves because yeah. she's just so steady and consistent that she's always at least an 8 out of 10. I think you've also got Lauren Hemp, who you've seen clips of her yep. everywhere. She's had an unbelievable season for Man City, and she's only young still, so I think this will really be her tournament to shine. Another thing that was a big talking point for the media, and I know that Serena Vigman got fed up with answering questions about this, that it was that Steph Horton wasn't going to be brought in for the Euros. She was injured for the majority of the season. She's tried so hard, hasn't she, to come back. Didn't quite make it. Of course, she was the captain, and then Leah Williamson was, was given that captaincy role in the absence of Steph. Tell us how Leah's done and, and what kind of a leader she is. Yeah, firstly, I think I have huge admiration for Steph. She worked her socks off to make it into the squad and she tried so hard to get back and I think it was just a little bit too soon for her but for Leah she's took on the responsibility unbelievably you can see that she's also been playing an, a new role for her yeah. which is a task in itself to be honest at any level never mind at the top of the international game I think to be able to take that on your shoulders as well as the captaincy she's only 25 and she's really taken it in her stride for those that don't know for Arsenal Leah plays centre-back doesn't she and then yep. for England under Serena she prefers her in midfield where would you have her um, I've known Leah a long time so I'm used to her being behind me yeah. at centre-back I think it's difficult when you play week in week out in one position to just quickly transition at such a high level to another position I think you can see she feels really comfortable in both I personally would like to see her at centre back but I'm not the manager yeah, am I yeah. <laughs> well do you know what Ian Wright obviously works in a, a, a lot of the games with me the women's games and he is such a massive fan such an advocate uh, and an expert and he was saying actually that he prefers Leah at centre back as well because in, in the midfield role she almost doesn't almost doesn't realise how much space is behind her whereas when she's playing centre back she knows exactly what's going on and she's looking forward the whole time yeah I think it's two very different positions I actually had a little cameo stunt at centre back this season due to injuries and it is really different in midfield like you've got to be really aware of your surroundings and everything going on behind you and when you're at centre back she's got a brilliant ability to carry the ball out from the back and you often don't see that in midfield as much just because it's much more compact so yeah. 
for me, her skills suit her playing at centre back. Yeah, there's something about uh, a tournament in your home country and and about the the support that it drums up. Phil, I was wondering with you because a lot of the games that that we cover. The fan bases are very different, aren't they, Katie? Like, when you go to a women's game, you will get um, Mexican waves and, and you will get people cheering for all sorts of things. It's almost like they don't care what's going on. If the, yeah. if the opposition scores a goal, they're like, whoa! And you're like, hang on a minute! No, but, it's, but, but it's so full of families. It's like a really nice environment. Would you be tempted to, to take your kids there? Bit? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, obviously, uh, the women's football is huge now, um, and, it, and so it should be. Um, you know, you see it on, on the TV, um, you're tuning in. Uh, there's some excellent players. Um, I think obviously Phil Neville a couple of years back did a fantastic job with them, um, and obviously for the tournament and to the, for the for the game to be at Old Trafford tonight, um, yeah, I'd obviously 100% take the kids down. My, my my daughter is 11 and she's always playing in the garden. And mm -hmm. honestly, she's so good tackling um, the, my two sons as well <laughs> and her um, cousin. And she's been on me. Find me a team, Dad. Find me a team. So I finally found her a team in the area and she loves it she yeah, loves getting yeah. stuck in loves the football it's all part taking part yeah, yeah absolutely um, now the UK women reluctant to talk about their love of sports on a, on a date due to be challenged or not taken seriously um, I'm not actually sure one of, one of my producers basically just wanted to discuss this um, essentially when you talk about the women's game one thing that I find Katie is you almost get fed up talking about the growth of it a little bit because it, it seems to be like an almost like a like a go-to question to uh, to ask about the women's game, whereas rather than talk about the growth of it, it's here now, isn't it? And it, and it's actually happening. And as as a player yourself who plays in the WSL and, and who knows a lot about the game, do you feel like there are other things that could be going on? Because we know that there's been improvement in the wage structure, but what about facilities and things like that? Because there's still a big difference between where women can train and the men can train at these clubs. Yeah, totally. I think. There is still disparities going on. Um, I think that, like you say, some things have certainly improved, but there's other things that certainly need to follow. I think in um, some research done by Bumble, it found that women are often hesitant to talk about um, being involved in sport, playing sport, or being a fan of sport because they feel like their knowledge is going to be questioned or they're not taken too seriously. And I think that's something that definitely needs to change the narrative and perception around women in sport that you, you're at the professional level, you're at the highest level you can be, and that's something that does need to be taken seriously mm. and with more respect. Do you know what? I get that a lot when I go to the pub. Um, what I get is, is guys coming up to me and they go, how much do you really know about football? And I'm like, brilliant, are you going to give me a little test? And sometimes they do. And then afterwards they go, all oh, right, cool. And I'm like, thank you for your clarification that I'm allowed to work <laughs> a lot more than you. I feel a lot better. Yeah, I feel a lot better now. They're like, can you name me 1 to 11 of, of Arsenal? I'm like, I could name you their academy as well. <laughs> like, should we wow. move on? Um, Katie, thank you so much. It's been so brilliant having you on. And uh, it's just really lovely to see you. I'm really excited about tonight. I know you are as well. And I know you're busy and you've got other things to go and do. So uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on, Katie. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.